Hello, welcome, and thanks for joining me for another book chat. This time, let's spend a few minutes with A Wild Sheep Chase by Haruki Murakami, which I finished fairly recently. And this book was published back in 1982 in Japan and then was translated into English, from what I can tell, in 1989. This edition that I read was translated by Alfred Birnbaum, and the edition I read is a first vintage international edition from 2002. I did read this book electronically. Um, this book is the eighth of the Murakami novels that I've read. I've enjoyed each and every one of them. They each have a certain vibe and a certain similarity, but they all are a bit different. Um, and so they each have their own sort of different vibe, and this one was really no exception. This one is considered the third of the Rat series. So the Rat series uh, starts with Hear the Wind Sing and Pinball 1973, which I've read previously and also chatted, so I'll link to the chats down in the details below and then this one's the third of the rat series and then i think some consider the fourth there were to be a fourth in the rat series called dance 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 which i have not read but you know i read here here the wind sing and pinball 1973 a while back so i really wanted to get to a wild sheep chase and i actually hadn't have been meaning to do this for quite some time so i'm really glad to have finally uh, gotten it read it is a standalone story though standalone novel it's not have necessary to have read here the wind sing or pinball Ball 1973 in order to enjoy this uh, book because this book does have its own story. It does have some of the same characters in it though, however, including that of the rat, the character called the rat who uh, plays a fairly big part in this novel, although he's not the main character. The main character is an unnamed sort of, I think, 30-year-old uh, man who, whose life is really kind of going nowhere fast. He's in the middle of a divorce. His wife's up and left him. Um, he's kind of bored with his life. He's living a sort of a mediocre, uh, mundane life. He and his friend, a while back, had started a small, I think it started out as maybe doing translations uh, company, and then it had kind of grown into, I think, like an ad agency, and was fairly successful, but he found it extremely boring and not, you know, really unfulfilling. And so during the course of this, like sort of early on in the novel, he comes across a picture of, um, or he, he comes across a, a woman with, the one, I'm calling her the woman with exquisite ears. She has extraordinarily beautiful and mysteriously compelling and somewhat magical ears. Um, so this is sort of classic Murakami, right? He, he actually decides to try to track her down and meet her. It turns out she is a part-time ear model and part-time uh, proofreader and part-time call girl. And he strikes up sort of a relationship with her. She actually finds him uh, also sort of interesting, which, um, you know, he, he, he enjoys, of course. She, she does not let most people see her ears because her ears, like I said, aren't ordinary ears. And so she guards her ears very carefully, uh, but she does eventually allow him to see her ears and... Um, he uh, he is very connected to her and her ears. But so they sort of uh, develop a relationship. Well, he gets this letter from his old friend who's called the rat who, you know, appeared in the earlier novels, like I mentioned. And this letter, uh, he, this letter sort of appears out of nowhere and is somewhat mysterious. And in the letter is a photograph of sort of a landscape um, a pastoral kind of scene with mountains in the background, and then this flock of sheep, uh, a herd of a flock of sheep there uh, grazing in this in this meadow. And one of the sheep, he doesn't notice right away, but one of the sheep is actually somewhat a little bit different than the rest of them. But his friend, the rat, in this letter says, um, "You know, just make sure this this photo, if you would do me a favor or whatever." Um, Get, make sure this letter gets, uh, I mean, this photo gets uh, put somewhere like the pu where the public can see it. And so uh, the guy ends up using the photo in, a, I, if I remember right, in some kind of ca ad campaign where it's, you know, published. And he gets this mysterious visitor uh, eventually. Um, it's a secretary to a man called the boss, who's this sort of underworld, uh, very powerfully connected figure that we call, that is called the boss. And then this guy that visits him is the secretary of the boss, and he's known as the black-suited secretary. And they, the boss um, 
But the secretary wants to meet uh, and meet meet him and uh, the guy and tells his business partner to arrange this. He arranges this meeting out in this palatial estate or whatever to have this conversation with the guy about um, where this where he found this photo uh, that was used in this campaign, right? And he ends up tasking him with some very dire consequences if he can't uh, complete this task of finding this particular sheep. One of the sheep in the photos, you know, is not quite like the others. And this guy tasks him with finding that and he gives him a month to do so. So this guy, and he gives him big giant cash wad of money, you know, basically unlimited funds to do it. Uh, but the guy doesn't really know where to start finding his friends, so he and the girl with the exquisite ears um, set out on really this adventure first to find the rat, because that's where the photo came from, right? They have no idea where the mountains, the way the picture is, the way the photo is, they can't even really tell where... Um, where it is located in Japan, and then to complicate matters, the postmark on the letter that the rat had sent it was all smudged and, and was unreadable, and so they can't even tell from where this letter had been sent. Um, but they strike out nonetheless uh, to try to find this particular, this, these particular mountains, and then with hopes of finding, you know, this particular sheep. So this particular sheep is not an ordinary sheep, we find out. This sheep may or may not be controlling world affairs. <laughs> so it's a it's a special sheep. Uh, so the sheep uh, then is, we find out uh, through the course of meeting several other sort of very eccentric characters, all of whom have no names, one, one called the Sheep Professor, um, that, uh, you know, this sheep is been around a while and uh, intervening in human affairs and has a plan for the future of humanity, uh, which may or may not be to the benefit of humanity. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I won't give away anything else about that because I don't want to detract anything from... Um, from reading the book and going on this wild sheep chase with the characters because it was kind of fun. Just this little bit of a mystery uh, in there as well. So, um, yeah, you know, one of the other characters that I want to mention is the cat. So the cat, uh, the character, the guy with, you know, the ad agency guy the, with the boyfriend now of the girl with the exquisite ears has this cat um, the cat also doesn't have a name, uh, but through the course of the novel, the cat is the only character who is eventually given a name. So that's kind of cool. Um, the, if you've read many uh, Murakami novels, there's often a cat or cats in the novels. And in this case, that's the cat tie-in, the Murakami cat tie-in. This cat gets a name, uh, unlike the rest of the characters. So... Yeah, I enjoyed this, uh, you know, a lot, I, quite a bit. I, it, it was very easy to read. This is very early Murakami, so not as dense and long as something like 1Q84, one of his newer novels. Um, you know, this is one of his novels from the 1980s, so it's uh, really early. So a lot of his ideas are in development here that we see much more complex in later novels like 1Q84 um, and some of the other later novels. One thing is the well. Uh, there's a well, you know, that's also a recurring theme of a person in a well or a well. And there is a well in A Wild Sheep Chase, but it's a very minor mention of a well, but it's still there. Um, I did see, I was going to link to, and I forgot to call it up right now, but uh, for this chat, but uh, a, a, a reviewer on um, on Goodreads had done a review and had just put it in photos. So there was like an ear, uh, a sheep, a cat, um, a grandfather clock. I didn't mention the grandfather clock. There's a grandfather clock uh, that's pretty important in the book. Um, let's see, what else? Cigarettes, uh, beer. Uh, the character drinks whiskey and beer um, and smokes a lot in this in this novel. Um, some other things I think that um, uh, that in, Mur in Murakami's uh, it works. There's a lot of references to classical music and pop music and jazz, and this book was no exception. We already saw this in this kind of early work. And then I'm wearing this t-shirt. This is Discworld. 
here because in, there's a reference to Discworld in, in this book, in A Wild Sheep Chase. The character in, in A Wild Sheep Chase says at one point, the world, uh, you know, as far as the world goes, um, he says whenever he thinks of the world, he thinks of a giant tortoise, uh, elephants on the back of a giant tortoise, uh, you know, a reference to Discworld. So I thought I'd wear my Discworld t-shirt uh, for this chat since there was a reference to it in this in this novel. Um, yeah, so what else? Um, ne what next read for Murakami? I don't know if I'll read Dance, Dance, Dance next since it's kind of considered in the Rat series or if I'll read his newest work, which is Killing Commendatory. I don't know. Um, we'll just have to see. I'm not sure. I, I hope to get to another Murakami novel, maybe still yet this year, so, so we'll see. But before I close out this chat, I did want to wind up with, um, with a quote from the book uh, that I really liked. So Murakami novels, kind of another recurring theme, I think, in Murakami novels is a character like this guy, this 30-ish this year old guy, who finds himself or herself in a, a, a reality that's not quite, you know, in a different reality. Like it's the, a reality that sits right beside our regular everyday reality, but a reality that's really quite different. And then this book is no exception. This character... Um, is living this really mundane life and then he finds that there's this whole different reality going on here where there's a sheep potentially controlling human or interfe interfering with human affairs, a whole underworld of activity and other world of activity going on that he wasn't aware of. So this quote in the book, I th thought sort of, it was from the end of the, sort of the, close to the end of the book, but I, sort of, I thought it sort of illustrated that really well. And the quote is, there was a train living at 12 o'clock sharp not a soul on the platform. On board, only four passengers, including myself. Even so, it was a relief to see people after so long. One way or another, I'd made it back to the land of the living. No matter how boring or mediocre it might be, this was my world. <laughs> so uh, he comes full circle in this novel uh, and takes a train back to his own reality. So. I just thought it was so much fun to read. I'm so glad that uh, that I did, and I will be reading more Murakami in the future um, for sure. So my next book chat is going to be The Philosophy of Civilization by Albert Schweitzer. I am about 60 pages away from finishing this book, so I should get a chat up on this really soon. So until next time, take care. Bye.